All right. Good morning, Cornerstone. I forgot I've got my mask on. All right, guys, we are so, so excited to have chapel with you this morning. In the form room, we've got a couple groups live with us. We've got fifth grade. Give a shout out. Good morning, fifth grade. And we even have some of our EE friends. Good morning, guys. Good to see you back there. Thank you for joining us. And in your classrooms, guys, we are so excited to worship with you this morning. Are you guys excited? I'm pretty sure that was Mr. Norris, but I can hear you in my mind. I know what it sounds like, and it is awesome. Well, guys, we are so thankful to worship together here with you this morning all over our CCA campus. God is doing an amazing work, and we're so excited to worship this morning. But before we do that, I have a fun game for all of us to play. Do you guys like games? I love games. And I play a lot of games, and I think one of the things that makes our chapel experience really fun and unique is some interesting games. Now, I, I like the interesting ones because they're a little bit different and a little bit uh, quirky, and today is not an exception. Today is a super interesting and fun game. It is called the Bible Name Telephone Game. The Bible Name Telephone Game. And here's how this is going to work. I have three very, very interesting-sounding Bible names. Now, if you read the Bible, you know that there are some quirky and crazy Bible names. And today, what we're going to do, the way that this will work, is I am going to show you guys a piece of paper, and only one person, the entire class, has to close their eyes Okay? The entire class will have to close their eyes. I will show the name to the camera, and that there can only be one person who can see that. Or maybe teachers, maybe you want to start it, and then the way that this will work is I will, you'll, I'll tell the name to one person, and then you'll have to pass it down the line. And then once we get to the end, we're going to see what kind of crazy mixed up Bible name we've got, and then I'll tell you the real answer. Okay? Sound good? You guys know how it's going to work? So I'm going to start over here, all right? So James, I'm going to start with you on this side, and then Dominic, I'll start with you on this side, and we'll make our entire way back. And preschool, you guys want to play too? Okay, so we'll pass it down the line, and so when we get to the very end, we're going to see what we've got, okay? So if you are in your classroom, go ahead and close your eyes. If you're in here in the forum room, Go ahead and close your eyes. I will show our very first name right now. Here we go. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed. Here is our very first name. Are we good there, Olivia? Can you see it? Okay, there is the name. So teachers, why don't you now begin the process of the telephone game. All right, I'm going to come over here. James, I'm going to whisper it to you. Okay, now I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to whisper it to Dominic. Go ahead, pass it down the line. Okay, pass it down the line. The telephone's got to go. Well, this, is already <laughs> this is the fun part. Okay, pass it down the line. <laughs> keep going, keep going. Okay, keep going, keep going. Pass it down the line. Pass it down. Okay, 
Okay, Emmy, hold on to it. Okay, pass it down, pass it down. All right, Sam. <laughs> pass it down the line. Almost there. Two more left. <laughs> Pass it down. Okay, here we go. Let's see what we got. What was what did you hear? What was the what was the name? I don't know. You don't, do you remember what it was? Mm -hmm. Avasicado. Avasicado. Wow. Avasicado over here. All right, Emmy. Obadiah. Obadiah over here. Okay. And Mr. Bent, what was it? The original word was Obed Edom. Obed Edom. Obed Edom. If you don't know who Obed Edom, if you don't know the story of Obed Edom, David gave Obed-Edom the ark to keep in his house. He kept the ark in his house. How crazy would that have been? All right, we have one more Bible name telephone game, if you are ready. Here we go. Close your eyes. Okay, I'm trying to, yes, we're going to do this one. This one is my favorite. Okay, close your eyes. Okay, Olivia, here we go. All right, there we go. This is our name. It is a real Bible name. Okay, you good? All right. So keep your eyes closed down here. Here's our name. Okay, and over on this side. All right, go ahead. Pass it down the line. Let's see where we can go. What? Yes. Okay, go quick this time. Go quick and pass it. Pass the name down the line. Let's see what we get. Yeah, so they save for upper school. That's right. All right, pass it down. Got to go quick. Got to go quick. Pass it down the line. And then if you in your, in your classes, I would love to hear what your class came up with. So find me at some point in the hallway today and let me know what your class got for the Bible names, okay? I think we had something avocado the first time. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Keep going. Pass it down. Pass it down. Pass it down. Let's see what we get. Keep going. Keep going. Pass it down. Lots of giggles. Only one person. Pass it down. Emmy, has it got back to you? Okay, you got it? Okay, only, only listen to Lindsay. All right, very good. Don't spoil it. Turn around, face forward. Okay? Pass it down. All right, Sam, here we go. Pass it down. Pass it to Kaysen. Oh, 
Okay. Ready? You got it? Okay, what was it? Oh, that's okay. Remember what it was? Okay. May show Lado. May show Lado. May show Lado on this side. May show Lado. All right, over here, Emmy. East Badito. East Badito. That sounds like a taco joint. I would go eat there. What are we having for supper tonight? We're having East Babito. All right, guys, here is the official name Ish Babinab. Ish Babinab. <coughs> Ishbabinab is an actual dude in the story of the Bible. He was a descendant of the giants of Goliath. And when David was a really, really old man, he was about ready to die. Ishbabinab wanted to go have revenge on King David for killing Goliath. And so he goes and he brings his giant spear. But then David has a young soldier in his army, a good friend named Abishai. And Abishai goes and fights Ishbabinab and boom, takes him down. Isn't that awesome? All right, guys, we'll go ahead, stand. We're going to say our verse. And I, I do believe we've got two people here who are going to say their verse. Come on up, guys. We've got Connor and Sarah and Isaac. Come on over, guys. They're going to lead fifth grade in their verse. All right, you ready? Okay, here we go. First Peter 3, 14 and 15. But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts, honor God, Christ the Lord, as holy. Always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the faith that is in you. <laughs> yet, yet do it with, with gentleness and respect. And First Peter 3, 14, and 15. Woo, good job, guys. Good job. I love that. Well, go ahead. If you're in your classroom, go ahead and stand and say your verse. If you are here in the forum room, go ahead and stand, and we are going to sing in musical worship. Give you guys a few more seconds in your classroom to finish up. All right. Good morning, Cornerstone. Good morning, Mr. Good. I, I don't know about you. I just want to say the phrase Ishbabinab all day long. Ishbabinab. <laughs> okay. Whether or not you're in your classroom or here with us, would you stand as we begin our worship this morning? Guys, I have no idea what you're saying to me. <laughs> what? Oh, there it is. Mercy seat. 
Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. our prayer this morning that that we would adore you in in everything that we do for you are everything for us so god as we uh as we now pivot to to listening to what your word has to say to us just uh, open our hearts and our ears uh, for any message that we are able to receive this morning god it's in jesus name i pray amen all right in fifth grade have A dream of heaven. John was one of Jesus' helpers. He was old now and living on an island, which might sound nice, except it was a prison. The leaders put him there to stop him from talking about Jesus. But I'm sure you don't think a little thing like being in a cell in a prison on an island in the middle of an ocean could stop God's plan, do you? One morning, Jesus appeared, right there in John's cell. Jesus' eyes were bright and shining like the sun. I'm going to show you a secret, John, Jesus said, about when I come back. His voice was like the sound of rushing waters. Write down what you see so God's children can read it. 
and wait with happy excitement. Then Jesus gave John a beautiful dream. Except John was wide awake, and what he saw was real. And one day, it would all come true. I see a throne, and on the throne is a king, and the king is Jesus. All around the throne, people are bowing down. They're giving him their treasures. There are loud cheers and clapping, clapping and bright laughter like a, a, a thousand waterfalls, and everyone bursts out singing a new song. This is our king the lamb who died, so we don't have to. Our rescuer, all honour and glory for ever and ever. Oh, and every creature everywhere, in heaven and on earth, and under the earth and in the sea, joins in. And then from all around, a wide, immense, beautiful silence. And I see Satan, God's horrible enemy, thrown down, defeated. I see a sparkling city shimmering in the sky, glittering, glowing, or oh, coming down from heaven and from the sky. Heaven is coming down to earth. God's city is beautiful. Walls of topaz, jasper, sapphire. Wide streets paved with gold. Gleaming pearl gates that are never locked shut. Where's the sun? Where's the moon? <laughs> they aren't needed anymore. God is all the light people need. No more darkness. No more night. And the king says, Look, God and his children are together again. No more running away or hiding. No more crying or being lonely or afraid. No more being sick or dying. Because all those things are gone. Yes, they're gone forever. Everything sad has come untrue. And see... I have wiped away every tear from every eye. And then a deep, beautiful voice that sounded like thunder in the sky says, Look, I am making everything new. It was hard to squeeze all John saw into words and fit it onto a page and cram it into a book. All the words on all the pages of all the books in all the world would never be enough. I am the beginning, Jesus said, and the ending. One day, John knew heaven would come down and mend God's broken world and make it our true, perfect home once again. And he knew in some mysterious way that would be hard to explain, that everything was going to be more wonderful for once having been so sad. And he knew then that the ending of the story was going to be so great, it would make all the sadness and tears and everything seem like just a shadow that is chased away by the morning sun. I'm on my way, said Jesus. I'll be there soon. John came to the end of his book, but he didn't write the end, because of course that's how stories finish, and this one's not over yet. So instead he wrote, Come quickly, Jesus which perhaps is really just another way of saying, to be continued. For anyone who says yes to Jesus, for anyone who believes what Jesus said, 
for anyone who will just reach out to take it, then God will give them this wonderful gift, to be born into a whole new life, to be who they really are, who God always made them to be, their own true selves, God's dear child. Because you see, the most wonderful thing about this story is, it's your story too. When I say the words, to be continued, what happens in your mind? Maybe you're watching a show, and you get to the end of the show, and then to be continued. Maybe you're reading a book, and it's filled with action, and you want to know what's going to happen, what's going to happen, and then all of a sudden, to be continued. Oh, how does that feel? Ah, you're hanging on the edge of your seat. You want to know what happens to the story. You're left wanting a conclusion. You know, one of my favorite authors is C.S. Lewis. Have you guys read any of the Narnia books? Yeah. Which one are you reading right now? Oh, that was my first one. And guess what? I read it for the first time in fifth grade. One of my all-time favorite stories. And I want to tell you a scenario. You know, what if I told you that some archaeologists just discovered a brand new part of the Narnia series that C.S. Lewis wrote. They just discovered it. It's filled with all of the characters we've come to know and love. It's filled with action and drama, but there's only one problem. He didn't get time to finish it. And so you read it, and you're like, man, this is, this is mind-blowing. Th this is the greatest story I've ever read. There's no way we can't not finish the story. The world has to hear this story. What would you do? What would you do? Trinity, what would you do? Keep writing it. Keep reading it, that's right. Well, maybe you would gather people who loved C.S. Lewis and knew how he wrote and knew how his other stories tied together, and you get them all together, and you'd say, guys, we're going to finish the story because this is the most amazing story and the world needs to hear it. Well, I want to let you know that the Bible ends in a similar way. We're all given the action, the characters, the ups and the downs, even the amazing ending. But how we get to that ending is unknown. But through Jesus Christ, when we're adopted into his family, he calls us to play a part in the way that he is getting all of creation to that glorious ending that we just saw, the new heavens and the new earth. And if you are in Jesus Christ, you get to play a part in how the story gets written. Uh, that's amazing to me to think about. And that's how the Bible ends. Uh, I want to give you five ingredients that make a really great story. Uh, do we have any people who like to write stories in here or tell stories? I'm going to give you the five key ingredients that make a really awesome story. The first one, every great story needs an introduction. In this part of the story, the characters are introduced. The main theme of the story is laid out. In the Bible, the introduction, this is Genesis. This is where we get to see God creating everything. And then he makes mankind in his image. They were made in a perfect, awesome, close relationship with God. But in the introduction, we're also introduced to the main problem of the story. The main problem of the story is that when Adam and Eve disobeyed God, they brought brokenness and separation into God's good and perfect world. We were separated from God, from one another, and from his world. 
This sin brought brokenness and death into God's good and perfect creation, and it even separates us from God. You see, that's what happens in the introduction. The second key ingredient to a really great story is rising action. You need some rising action in the story. And in the rising action, you get uh, some tension as the characters in the story have to deal with the problem. In the Bible, this is the story of Israel. In Genesis, God made a great big promise to Adam and Eve that after they sinned, he was going to come after them. He was going to do away with sin and death once and for all. But then he says, the way that I'm going to do this, I want you guys to play a part in how that happens. And so God calls Abraham and says, Abraham, I'm going to make from your family a great big family for myself. And I want you guys to live for me. I'm going to show you how I want you to live so that you can show the whole world what it means to have a relationship with me. Well, how did the Israelites do with that task? Did they do a good job? Sometimes they did, and sometimes they didn't. There's actually some real big mess-ups in the family of Israel. And this is the rising action as God's people, they struggle to live for God. But in all of that struggle, all of the ups and all of the downs that we read about in the Old Testament, God never gives up on his people. Now, there are some big-time serious consequences for some of their mistakes, but in all of that, God always pursues his people. The third ingredient, this is everybody's favorite, is the climax. The climax of the story is the biggest part of the plot. In the climax, the main character of the story is put in a situation where a choice must be made that will affect the entire rest of the story. In the Bible, the climax is... Jesus! That's absolutely right. God's one and only Son, He came to earth and lived a perfect, sinless life, performing miracles, signs, and, and wonders, reaching out and healing people, showing them that I am the way, the truth, and, to li and the life. If you want that special, close relationship with me, trust me, follow me, look at me. But then, Jesus had to make a choice to lay down his life and die on a cross. And in the saddest, most darkest point in the story, the point in God's story where it looks like it's all over, that sin has won, death has won, Jesus rose from the grave in victory over sin and death, showing that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And if you want that special, close relationship with the God of the universe, all you'd have to do is believe. Jesus said that, if anyone should follow me, you must trust me, you must believe me, you must lay down your life and follow me. And when we do that, sin and death no longer have the final say in your life. Because of Jesus, you get to live with God forever. Now, the fourth ingredient of any great story is the falling action. So we've got introduction, rising action, climax, falling action. This is the point in the story where the major tension has been released. And we see the results of the climax. This is the era of the church. This is where God's people, through a relationship with Jesus Christ, get to live out the way of Jesus and the kingdom of God in their everyday lives. This is the era of your story. We're in the falling action. The point at which we get to respond to Jesus' invitation to have a relationship with him, to be forgiven of our sin, but then to show the entire world how amazing Jesus is. We do that through our thoughts, our words, our actions, when we lay down our life for others, when we love them, when we give, we're showing the world what Jesus is like. And because of that, Jesus says, I'm going to use you as part of the way that I'm getting the entire world to the very good and perfect end. You get to play a part in how the story is written. 
How awesome is that? Well, then the fifth and final ingredient to any story is the resolution. This is the last part of the story where every part of the plot has been wrapped up and the new world, the new normal, has been established. In the resolution, there's a sense of closure and a happy ending. In the Bible, God gives John, like we saw, a vision of this good, perfect, happy ending where heaven and earth are one. And as God's children who responded in faith to Jesus Christ, we get to live with God and with one another forever. Man, that's going to be amazing. Now, here's the amazing part of God's good and happy ending. It's just the way he created it to be. And the best part of this story, like we heard in our video, is that it's true. It's a true story. The one true story that you are made for. Newsflash, guys, you've been made to play a part in this story. It's what you're designed for. It's your purpose in life is to play a part in God's story. Jesus is the puzzle piece that ties all of these elements of the story together. And Jesus is inviting you to play a role. He's asking you, will you join me? Will you become a character in my story? Will you be a part of the way that I'm making all things new and the world sees Jesus through you? I want to end with a question. Are you part of God's story? Have you responded in faith to Jesus? Is he your Savior? Is he your Lord? I've given you your purpose in life today to show the whole world what Jesus, who Jesus is, and what, how amazing his love is, and to show the entire world that. That's your goal. That's what Jesus is inviting you into. And when you respond in faith to that, to, to Jesus, then he lets you be part of the way that he's writing the ending of the story. You've been designed for it. You've been made for it. And I want to encourage you, if you have not called out to Jesus and asked him to be your Savior, to be your Lord, asked him, God, I want to be part of your story, make the best decision of your life today. Don't wait. Don't wait. You can be part of his story. And if, guys, I know there are lots in here who have responded to that invitation and Jesus is the Lord and Savior of your life, to be continued. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that you are the author of the greatest story of creation, the one true story of life. Thank you, Jesus, for revealing who you are, the perfect Son of God, doing what we could never do, and then inviting us by faith in you to become part of your story. And so today, Jesus, I pray that if there's anyone here who has not responded in faith to Jesus, to you, asked to, they haven't asked that you would be their Savior, to be forgiven of their sin, they haven't been pricked in the heart, that they need that, Lord. I, I pray that today they would respond in faith to Jesus, that they would become part of your story. And then, God, for all of us who have res responded to Jesus, I, I pray that you would give us strength, the power of the Holy Spirit to listen to your word, to love you more than we love anything else in the entire world. God, would you give us that love, and would you help us walk by faith? to live it out, to become part of the way that you're making all things new as your Holy Spirit shines the spotlight on Jesus through our words, our thoughts, our actions. Today, would people see Jesus in me? And the amazing truth is that when we do that, God, you're using us in your story to write the good and perfect ending. It's amazing to think about, Lord. And so, God, I pray over these Young ones, I pray that you would give them a heart of faith that would last their entire lives. And would you use them, God, to show the whole world Jesus. And we pray that in your name.
Amen. All right, guys, it has been amazing to worship with you. And next week, we get to worship together in the gym. I am so excited that we'll all be together for that. It's going to be an amazing, amazing event. Go in God's peace, and we pray that you have an amazing, 